really love the idea of uh, luxury or, or gourmet street food because it allows chefs who maybe wouldn't have the capital to open a brick and mortar to test out their concepts um, to a wide array of people. So we've always called our place kind of the original food truck even though we have a power pole that's up there and we're firmly planted. It doesn't move but we're kind of the first food truck in Winston. Our typical Wednesday routine we'll have a couple to three to four trucks out so we have the La Vie en Rose French food truck on wheels which uh, serves amazing savory and sweet crepes. So this is the Screaming Radish, which is run by Kevin Reddick, the local chef, and this was all his idea, is to bring farm fresh produce, farm fresh uh, meats directly to customers. Just some of the best food that you've ever had. Not out of a food truck, just some of the best food you've ever had prepared for you. We've tried to offer Winston-Salem a spot for folks to just come in and be creative together, um, partner people up, pair them together may have never known one another and but they have similar interests so instead of running in parallel we've tried to get them to cross pollinate and that's really been the mission of coffee park and kind of the trailer itself so we've launched several ideas out of here and we're looking forward to a lot more ideas to come out of here just two years in operation we were mentioned in u.s airways magazine as being a winston-salem institution <laughs> which i thought was kind of phenomenal a two-year track record and we'd already been firmly planted in the neighborhood and in this community. I mean, after traveling all over the country, I mean, they're, they're everywhere. I mean, you go to D.C., the National Mall is lined with hundreds of food trucks over the weekend. Uh, you go into New York City and they have their own award show called the Vendies. Um, and I always thought it was a, a crazy idea. You could take something like a dessert truck, pull the, um, the finest five-star dining, huge dessert, and put it on a truck for a third of the cost and increase your reach and make some people happy in the process. And that, that's all I've seen these guys do is that they've just brought more notoriety to Winston-Salem's food culture. And so we're adding quality um, and availability to multiple locations daily. Um, there's not a day that you can go in this town without finding a food truck somewhere. So if you look at um, the Burke Street Food Truck Festival, for example, uh, first year, overwhelming response. Second year, even more overwhelming response. You're looking at 10 to 13,000 people clamoring to get these trucks. Well, I, I took a trip out to Portland, Oregon and saw a, a very vibrant food truck scene out there. Um, and when I came back to North Carolina, I recognized that the scene in, in our state and specifically in Winston-Salem was nowhere near the potential that it had. So we, we have received a number of awards in Winston-Salem and throughout the triad and I think it goes back to the quality of our food. The most popular burger would be the Ben's Pimento Burger, um, which I'm pretty proud about. So the, the pimento cheese that we use is from a local Clemens-based company called Uncle Chris's Pickles and Pimento Cheese. Um, our number two is actually the PBB&J Burger, which sounds kind of crazy. You, you have to be feeling a little bit adventurous to give it a try, but it's made with homemade peanut butter, red pepper jelly, and bacon all on top of our burger. I was homeschooled and my mother taught me how to cook as one of the subjects. So I always secretly wanted to be a cook. Uh, I'm a musician, but I always wanted to cook. So this is, to me, this is my start to be able to get some other food established, but you gotta start somewhere. So hot dogs is where it starts. All right. I do know I have a specific recipe that I boil my hot dogs in that I don't think nobody else is doing. So that would definitely set me apart as far as hot dog vendors are concerned. Okay. Some of the best chefs work out of stuff like this to get their business started. And I think it's, it's a good thing to check out. I know kids my age a lot of times, especially in college, the hard part's getting around to different places to eat. But when you have you know, food trucks that come to you, come to big events, it's really nice and convenient. It's just fun, it's something different. It's a way to get people out of their house into a different scene. You can travel, move the trucks, and go to different spots around town. Um, and it's easy to try a couple different things, completely different, bring three or four people spread out, all join in and share. I think it's uh, like a whole new avenue of uh, the food industry where people used to consider trucks to be, you know, what they call roach coaches and stuff, to serving like gourmet, you know, meals now. I just like the variety. It's great to, to have a different truck here every once in a while and sometimes in front of the building, so it's, it's a good way to change it up a little bit. Uh, we have uh, cold pressed juices that are uh, pressed locally in Winston. Um, we have 
everything from our nut milks to our green juices. Um, the green juices are definitely the star of the show. Like, our juice truck is healthy fast food. So. For me, it's my lunch break right now, and I work in an office. There's, I got no windows, n nothing. Um, so being out here in the beautiful weather, getting some really good coffee and the opportunity to get some good food, you, you, it's impossible to pass up. Also, like when you go to a bar uh, that had, you know, that just serves alcohol, suddenly bring up a food truck. Well, man, this is a, this is a nice variety. All of a sudden, I'm, ha I'm having. I get to have my favorite beer at my favorite bar, and then get this, you know, whatever pizza, whatever hot dog I uh, feel like, because it, it basically came to me. I was going to the bar no matter what. I like the novelty of it. I can't think of a food truck that I've been to recently around here that I didn't think I got my money's worth from. Luciano's Tacos, can't go wrong with that. What's the taco truck? Luciano's, Luciano's Taco Truck. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, some of the best tacos in town. Mexico, Veracruz, Mexico. Okay. Well, everything is the best, only that sell more tacos. You know, like people look always for something good for the for like 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 homemade, and I think the the food truck is the best. That's, that's the way you can get it, like homemade food. And we want the the widest variety possible. I would love for people to be to come out here and basically tour the world with their palate. And I kind of grew up in a culture where this was very common. I grew up in India, and street food is very very common over there. And uh, to see that happening here, and it's it's not really something new. I mean, if you look at other big cities, it's already there so much there. But to see this happening in Winston actually is something that I kind of personally like. You know, it, I can bring a piece a piece of of my island. You know, of, of the things I grew up with, Puerto Rican food. It's it's really to me, it's a really good blend of, of different cultures. And, and different seasonings that come from those cultures and roots. Well, I have a real French chef in my food truck. He's not a fake, and uh, he knows what he's cooking. He's very creative. We're pink. There aren't a lot of pink trucks out there with the Eiffel Tower on them. You see, the thing is, is that in Europe, I grew up in Europe, and mostly my parents are from Italy, and my husband grew up in France. That's the way people eat over there anyway, because, for example, a typical day in France is you get up, you go to work and on your way home you hit the open air market. Very, they don't buy a lot of pre-processed foods. So you really eat what's available. If there are no apples today, you eat something else. If there's no meat, you eat something else. So you, they live with the seasons. I was born and raised in Haiti and I moved in North Carolina about 10 years ago. The way, the way Haitian food cook is different than American food. So the seasoning part, you have to stay certain hours to, for our food to be seasoning. So the fry pork, uh, which we were saying um, in Haiti, you would say Rio, and we sell a lot. And the second best selling item is the cool free, and a lot of American people saying cool aid free. So those two items are the best seller in the menu. And the people out there are wonderful. They're always supporting us. Whenever we come out, they make us feel welcome like a family, so. And you know, there's a running joke in Winston is that once you've lived here, you may leave, but you are gonna come back. There's just kind of a pull. There's a sense of community here that I haven't really experienced in a city of this size. Mm. Um, and you can go into smaller communities and kind of feel the same vibe. But hey, I think it's it's a pull of the arts. It's a pull of the, the mix of modern and antiquity as well. And we have Old Salem and then we have Winston, the new part of town. And we still kind of have that same type of spirit. You know, there are individual pockets of community here, but we all kind of come together uh, around certain things. I've watched um, Trade Street District uh, move up and become, you know, something that just wasn't existing in this town and has changed the landscape and I just want to be a part of that. It's been one of the uh, the biggest draws is just to be able to participate in a community where folks are interested in participating in the community. So I am the senior manager for community relations for Wake Forest Innovation Quarter and I had the pleasure of collaborating with the fine folks at Boots Flea to bring Boots Flea Market to Bailey Park in the Innovation Quarter today. Bailey Park is sort of our centerpiece green space. Behind us we have Wake Forest Biotech Place, 525 Divine, 
around 242 developable acres. I wanted to partner up with Lindsay from Bailey Park, Brian Cole, he does the Texas Peak Culinary Arts Festival, and my other partner, John Bryan, who owns West End Mill Works and Crankies, to create this great event. Now, Bailey Park has tons of grass area where kids can play and wander and frolic. You can go buy um, lunch down at the food truck area. Not only that, but we have 96 of the best vendors in North Carolina and Virginia that come here, regulars, that do this on a professional basis, where you can get all kinds of great deals throughout the day. This is going to be an ongoing, ongoing event, a project that we're going to be working on in Winston-Salem annually. We're going to grow. Next year we want 200 vendors, 10 bands, and 20 food trucks. I just really love following food trucks and Food truck groupie. Good. Honey wow. roasted peanuts. Just like it's full. Yeah. Full I wouldn't call it a very, really cool. very healthy sandwich, but it's really good. Yeah, I have a son in law who um, is really good at making barbecue, and uh, now he's thinking about the food truck oh, idea. Really? Yeah. The, the life of any food truck owner is, is a pretty hectic one, um, despite what, what you might think just working a lunch shift. Um, our days start just as early as anyone else's. So we're up at seven, we're hitting the kitchen, we're going to buy ingredients and hitting the bank for change. Um, we're stocking up the truck and making sure we have everything that we need for our shift. We're going on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, our website, making sure that we get the message out of where we're going to be. And then we, we work in the truck for however long our shift is. And when we're finished with that, it's sort of the whole breakdown process. So we close everything up, we clean up, we take inventory of what we sold and what we might need to repurchase again, whether that evening or the next day. When, when we have lunch shifts and evening shifts, it can be 12, 14 hour days sometimes, just making sure that we're prepared for everything. And then a regular day in the morning is usually panic. The minute you wake up, you think, oh my God, what did I forget or what should I get? Getting it ready, making sure the fridge is cold enough, making sure you're ready to roll, because once you're on the road, you're on your way, you can't go home again. So I have two BAs and I speak several languages, but I couldn't find a really decent job. I kept being told I was overqualified. So this way we can also work as a couple and get to spend more time together. And our kids come with us a lot too. So it's a family thing. It's really hard on the shoulder when you have to scoop a thousand scoops in a day. It wears you out. But I don't know, other than that, I love it. I absolutely love my job. You have to, above all things, keep your customers happy. Oh man, just the late nights and early mornings, you know, but it's, it goes with the territory, so. Get out in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a regular day can vary. You just never know what you might get. You might get out and sell all your hot dogs, or you might get out and sell two hot dogs. You got to be mentally prepared for whichever one happens. You know, we branded ourselves Camel City Grill because this is our home and this is where we want to stay. And it's all really interesting food. And but I feel like everybody can sort of get something at all of them, even if you're not super adventurous as an eater. But I also think it's a good thing for people to broaden their horizons. We got a lot of great stuff in the triad, and food truck rallies are a good way to kind of see what's out there. A Winston Salem food truck app would be a great idea. Thing. I have this saying with my kids, like when there's a food truck festival, we kind of call it uh, Coachella de Rochella. So, you know, you're incorporating that, but I think it puts a little finer spin on it too. So, taking back the term, man. Until we get a rash of food truck explosions, <laughs> I feel pretty safe around them. Um, obviously they use propane and other sort of generators, but um, I guess other restaurants could explode too, grease fires and things of that nature as well. Uh, more food trucks. <laughs> yeah, more, more food, food trucks. trucks. More food trucks. Right. Yeah. And right. late night food trucks. We need late night food trucks. Really. Right. Thank you. It's it's a sense of family. I mean, it's almost like the uh, the Bedouin tribe of food truckers, and they travel around together, and they partner together, and they go to places together. It's in the spirit of co-opetition, as opposed to direct head-to-head -head competition. And I, I love that. I mean, that's just, again, it goes back to that sense of community. What draws me to stay in Winston is what drew me back to Winston to begin with, but it's what keeps me here as well.